Hi everyone and welcome to 2023. I'm really excited to be back chatting to you in the new year. I hope you all had a wonderful break over the winter holidays. I really enjoyed having some time off and having lots of time to read and also just enjoying Christmas with my mum. We had a lovely time. We went to a local carol service on Christmas Eve, which was really magical. And because of COVID, it was the first time that we'd actually been able to go into a church near us for a Christmas service. So that was very special. And we exchanged gifts with our neighbors and just had a really lovely, quiet, but very cozy and relaxing time. So I'm back feeling refreshed in 2023. And today in this video, I want to share the lovely books that I got for Christmas, as well as the ones that I read, because I read some really good ones that I'm looking forward to sharing with you. But before I do that, I also just wanted to have a bit of a chat with you about some changes coming in the new year with my channel. I've got a cup of tea. Mm because I've been up since quite early this morning. I'm back to my usual routine and I don't want to get too croaky. I chose my marmalade mug, very appropriate because my mum and I were actually just making marmalade the other day. We're sort of testing a bit of a cheats recipe to see if it works and if it does, I'll share it with you. But that brings me on to talking about some of the changes to my channel. One of the changes is that you'll notice this video is going up on Thursday. I would really like to do twice weekly videos from now on. I'm going to try this out on, in January and I really hope I'll be able to keep going with publishing two videos a week. And I'm going to change the publishing schedule a little bit. So videos should be going up now on Thursdays and Sundays. So I hope that you'll enjoy having more videos and although I'll still be keeping some bookish ones like this one and my favorite things videos when I just sit and chat to the camera like this, I also want to be including a lot more lifestyle vlogs going forward. So those are generally reading vlogs where I tell you about what I'm reading, but I also show you other aspects of my life, like what I'm cooking or where I'm going or just general aspects of my life in Yorkshire, living with my mum and what we get up to. So I know a lot of you enjoy these types of vlogs from me and I've been wanting to do more of them for a while, but they are a bit of a challenge. They're a very different way to film than what I'm used to having done predominantly just a book YouTube channel before. So. I'm still in a bit of a learning curve with these sorts of videos. I tried hard over Christmas doing more of them and I think a lot of you do like these sorts of videos which is why I want to try and do more. But I am a bit nervous about it because it's very diff different sorts of techniques to filming in that way and I've been doing a lot of planning trying to think of good content to share with you all in January. But I hope you'll enjoy it because I think it fits so well with my philosophy of seasonal reading as well as seasonal living being so important to me. And I think this is really what I want to share through my videos going forward, enjoying these small pleasures that you get all through the seasons. And those pleasures not being only about the books that we read, but also about little activities like making marmalade in January or noticing the changing seasons when I go on my walks and things like that. So I hope you to sort of bring, I hope to bring you along on this journey and I hope that you'll like the increased content and more lifestyle and reading vlogs from me. So those are the changes coming in 2023. But let's get back to a traditional bookish video for today. So I wanted to share the books that I got for Christmas with you, as that's rather a tradition. And the first one 
as the most special one. I was so, so thrilled to get this. My mum found this for me. This is a book I've been wanting since I was about 12 years old. And it's a vintage edition of Carney's House Party by Maud Hart Loveless. Maud Hart, Lo Maud Hart Loveless wrote the Betsy Tacey series, which I've spoken about lots on my channel because I adore these books. They were written in the sort of 1940s, but they're set in the early 1900s in sort of small town Minnesota, and they're about a young girl and her best friends, and they're real coming of age stories. Betsy Ray is the heroine of this series, and you see her going from a very young girl through to adulthood and marriage, and her ambition is to be a writer. And she's really a heroine that sits alongside Jo March and Anne Shirley for me. She's a fantastic character and I love the Betsy Tacey series. And then there are a couple books that are sort of more standalones, but they connect to this series. So one is Emily of Deep Valley. And my mum also found a, a version of that for me earlier this year. So I feel like I've had a really lucky year with my Maud Hart Loveless collection because I've had the paperbacks for years, but I've always wanted the original hardbacks. And sadly, they're very hard to find. So Emily of Deep Valley is one. And then Carney's House Party is the other standalone book, but that connects to the main series. And I was so delighted to get this for Christmas. It has the original Vera Neville illustrations, of course, which I think are just fantastic. And I'm just thrilled with it. It's really in such good shape. And I, I've been looking for this for so long because it's normally really expensive, but my mum managed to find an affordable copy amazingly. So this was under the tree for me. And I was so thrilled. And then I also got um, this beautiful Waterstones special edition of The Story of Art Without Men by Katie Hessel. I love the special edition, which comes in this beautiful slip case, and it has more of a sort of pastel y uh, color tone to it. Um, than the sort of regular edition, and it has these beautiful marbled end papers too. They're not really marbled, but they're slightly marbled effect, I think. And I've been flicking through this, it's so interesting. Of course, it's really sumptuous, sumptuously illustrated, and it just looks fascinating. It is what the title says, a history of art without men, just really focusing on female artists. And I'm learning about so many I never knew about. I think this is just such an interesting book and I was really thrilled to get it. And then I got this book given to me as well. It's Tonics and Teas by Rachel de Sample. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing her name correctly, apologies if not, but this looks like such a good book for January. I want to try some of these tonics and teas this month. They look really, really uh, interesting and very tasty, a lot of them too, but some I think especially suited for January and wanting to give your system a bit of a reboost and for all of us who have healthy, uh, resolution set then this definitely looks good I want to try the garlic and lemon elixir so I'll try and make that in a vlog coming up at some point and see what I think of it I was really thrilled with that and then this book I'd actually pre-ordered uh, but it arrived just in time for Christmas so that was really exciting I'd pre-ordered it ages ago and it's an American in Provence art life and photography by Jamie Beck I've been following Jamie Beck's Instagram account for years she takes the most beautiful pictures of herself and her life in Provence and I just always have admired her photography so much I mean they're like art photographs, really beautiful. And this book is, of course, full of her gorgeous photography and little essays about 
her life and how her life changed when she went from being very um, career driven and having a really exciting and sort of high powered career in fashion photography to having a much simpler quieter life in Provence um, and what that did for her. So I love the mix of sort of personal reflection in this as well as it, good recipes and there are also photography tips in here too. So it's a really great mix of all sorts of things that I'm interested in. I think Jamie Beck is a really good writer as well. So I've been really enjoying reading this, not just looking at the beautiful pictures and it's really inspiring. So I was thrilled to get this and I thoroughly enjoyed looking at it over the holidays. And then this had been on my wish list for a while and I was so thrilled my mum got this for me. It's the Wordsworths, um, The Lake District Romantics and Their Life at Dove Cottage by Mick Manning and Britta Granstrom. Britta Granstrom is one of my favourite artists. She, she did a book about the Brontes as well, um, but she's just such a talented painter. I love all her artwork. I can't afford to get any, but I love getting her picture books. And these literary ones are so much fun. I loved the one about the Brontes and this one about the Wordsworths is really so lovely, utterly charming. It's beautifully illustrated and there are wonderful little insights about the Wordsworths, um, Dorothy and William, brother and sister who lived in the Lake District in Dove Cottage. Um, there's lots of insights about their lives. I like that it really takes Dorothy's perspective a lot in this book. Um, I really enjoyed that and of course mum and I visited Dove Cottage last spring and it was really such a lovely place. I have very fond memories of visiting there and I'd like to go back and it's nice to see it really brought to life in this beautiful picture book. So I think this is definitely something that can be enjoyed by adults as well as children but of course it would be a lovely gift to share with younger people too but I love it because I'm such a fan of British artwork and I think this is just a really nice little book about the Wordsworths. So I was thrilled with that. And then another book that's been on my wish list for a long time is this one, Deadlier, and I was really thrilled to get it for Christmas. It's a hundred of the best crime stories written by women and they're chosen by Sophie Hanna. And I'm really thrilled to get this. I think I will try and read some of these stories in January for the Comfort Book Club. As you know, I've chosen a mystery for this month. It's 450 from Paddington by Agatha Christie. So how fun to read a few mystery short stories, especially ones written by women this month too. I think this will be a bit of a month of cozy crime for me and I was really thrilled to get this one. So it looks like a really good collection and a lot that I haven't read. There are some uh, classic authors like Louisa May Alcott. I didn't really realize that she wrote any mysteries. And then there's some modern writers like uh, Margaret Atwood is in this, but also Enid Blyton, for instance, is in here. <laughs> so it's a real sort of mix and I'm looking forward to dipping in and out of this a lot. So I was really excited to get that. And then I got some cookbooks, which I was thrilled about because you know how much I love a good cookbook. And this one is a baking book that's been on my list for a long time as well. It's A Good Day to Bake by Benjamina Abuhi. I hope I've said that correctly. Apologies if not, but this one looks so nice. It's full of things that I want to try, like this parsnip, orange and ginger loaf. That sounds like a really good wintry bake. So I really would like to try that one soon. And she's got, done pumpkin spice coffee scones as well. Oh, it just looks full of really good recipes and I have Benjamina's first cookbook as well 
which I think was is called something like another way to cake or something like that I'll link to it as well and I really liked that one so I'm excited to get the new or newish one I think this one came out earlier this year but it's been on my wish list for a while so really excited to get another baking book and then this one has also been on my wish list for a while and it's Scandinavian Green by Trin Hanneman. Apologies again if I've not said that correctly. But this looks so good too. Oh, here's a recipe I want to try. Brussels sprout and blood orange salad. That sounds like a perfect January recipe to me. But this is just filled with great vegetarian recipes. I think that lots of us are trying to eat less meat even if you're not fully vegetarian which I'm not but I do like to eat vegetarian dishes and I'm looking forward to cooking from this very much it looks really inspiring so I was very excited to get that and then this is another one that both mum and I had really been wanting and it's Spice, A Cook's Companion by Mark Diancono. And I'm really looking forward to trying lots of the recipes in here too. There's one I've really earmarked which is an apple and mincemeat crumble and we have quite a lot of leftover mincemeat from Christmas so I definitely want to have a go at making that soon and there's also a roast chicken dish in this one that actually sounds very very good and a bit different so I'm hoping to try that as well but lots that I want to try from all of the cookbooks that I got so those were the books that I got for Christmas and I was absolutely thrilled with them. I did pick up a few for myself in the Waterstones sale as well, where generally after Christmas in Waterstone shops, they have selected hardbacks that go half price. So I did go along to our local Waterstones and I picked up a few books. Um, first up, I got this one. What Writers Read, 35 Writers on Their Favourite Book, edited by Pandora Sykes. And I can never resist books about books. I always love reading that type of thing. So this looks really great. Lots of fantastic authors on the books that really influenced them. And that's just the sort of thing that I love to read. So I was thrilled to pick that up. And then I got this one in the half price sale as well. It's the 120th anniversary edition of P.G. Woodhouse's very first novel, which is called The Pot Hunters. And it's a school story. And I've never read this one by him. So I was really thrilled to get a copy and especially this lovely anniversary edition. I think that's so pretty. And I'm curious to read it. Um, as his very first novel. I mean, I'm a big Woodhouse fan. I love the Jeeves and Worcester books and his Blanding Castle books and a lot of his short stories. So I'm excited to give this one a go. And then again in the half price sale, I picked up this book, She and Her Cat by Makoto Shinkai and Naruku Nagakawa. And this one sounds really interesting. It's set on the outskirts of Tokyo and it's about different uh, cats and their owners. I think all the stories are told through the perspective of the cat and they all try to sort of help their owner in different ways. It sounds like it's a really sweet read and I'm looking forward to giving this one a go as well. So I'm definitely intrigued by this and. This is on my list to read soon. And then again in the half price sale, I picked up Seasons of Storm and Wonder by Jim, Jim Crumley. These are based, this is based on his series of books. Um, he wrote The Nature of Winter, The Nature of Spring, Summer and Autumn, which are fantastic books. And this sort of compiles them together into one volume, but there's some extra material in here as well. And I'm really enjoying reading this and I, I really like having it all together in here. I've turned already to winter 
and have started reading a bit from it and he's just such a good writer I just really always appreciate his nature writing so much so definitely one that I would recommend and I'm really enjoying it already and then I picked up one cookbook in the half price sale as well which is Ottolenghi's Test Kitchen Extra Good Things so I always like Ottolenghi cookbooks they're always very inspiring and I was thrilled to get this one half price and then I got one cookbook from the Blackwell's sale actually which this was more than um, 50 percent off it was a really really good deal so I was thrilled to get it it's the British Larder a cookbook for all seasons by Madeleine Bonvini Hamill and this goes season by season through the year and um, Madeleine talks about ingredients that are seasonal in Britain and which ingredients she really highlights every month of the year and then there are different recipes for each month of the year as well so some of them look a bit complicated I think she's a chef and some of them are a bit chefy the recipes but a lot of them are ones that I would like to have a go at myself and there is a mix of some simpler recipes too which I'm always happy about uh, but I really got it for the seasonal aspect to it as well and the highlight of seasonal ingredients in her recipes so this is one that I've been enjoying flicking through and reading as well but so those are the books that I got and I'm really thrilled with all of them but I also wanted to just chat about some of the books that I've that I read as well over the holidays so let me just get my pile okay so the first book that I read once I went on holiday is this one The Box of Delights by John Macefield and I've read this book before it's a favorite of mine for Christmas and it was just such a joy to return it to return to it again it really is a quintessential Christmas read for me and I love this um, beautiful new edition as well with the illustrations by Quentin Blake inside if you've never read the Box of Delights then I do recommend putting it on your Christmas book list maybe for next Christmas because it is a lovely Christmassy read but it's actually the second book in a little series of two. The first book is called The Midnight Folk and events in that book definitely are referenced in this one so if you haven't ever read that one then I would definitely recommend reading that first and then you could save The Box of Delights for next Christmas but yes a real favorite of mine and I just loved coming back to it it was a perfect sort of cozy read um, that I read in the run-up to Christmas so I really enjoyed that one and then this was a book that I read just before going on my Christmas break but I don't think I told you about it and that's The Reluctant Widow by Georgia Hare I picked this one up in Bath you may remember that I love Georgette Hare's Regency romances of course we're reading The Nunsuch with the Comfort Book Club in February oh and by the way speaking of the Comfort Book Club too uh, yes that date will change as well it'll be come the last Thursday of the month rather than the last Friday with my change of schedule but I'll put that on my Instagram as well um, but anyway so I read The Reluctant Widow and this was such a fun light-hearted read that I really enjoyed getting into in the somewhat manic time just before going on my Christmas break um, I'm not sure it's the very best Georgette Hare book but I still enjoyed it and it was quite a fun one it's about a young woman who has fallen on hard times and has decided to become a governess even though she's from quite an upper class family and she goes to answer an advertisement for a governess and she is met by a driver of a carriage who in fact thinks she's someone else there's sort of a mistaken identity that goes on here so she arrives at a strange house expecting to be uh, given the post of governess to a small child 
and there's some very funny misunderstandings <laughs> that take place. She finds that in fact, um, they think she's answered an advertisement to marry an unruly cousin. So I won't spoil more of the story, but it's really very funny. I mean, it is rather um, more melodramatic than some of Georgette Hare's books. And there's like secret passages and stairways and this rambling old house and all sorts of um, drama. So you do have to suspend your disbelief quite a bit with this one. But I still enjoyed it and it was quite a good cold weather read actually because it's set I think either late January or February, definitely at a time when snowdrops are around because that gets mentioned a lot. So I just enjoyed it, it was a fun one even if not Georgia Hare's finest. And then over Christmas I read Darling by India Knight which I really so enjoyed. I wasn't quite sure what to expect of this. This is a modern retelling of The Pursuit of Love by Nancy Mitford and that's one of my favourite books and I always get a bit worried about modern retellings of sort of classic favourites but Indian Night did a really really good job and if you're a Nancy Mitford fan then definitely I think that you should read Darling. There's just so much for those who really love the novel to pick up on and enjoy in this book, which manages to keep very true to the spirit of the original. Um, but it really sort of transfers seamlessly to the modern age. I was really impressed by how India Knight dealt with her subject, how she managed to make the book a real tribute to Nancy Mitford that sort of diehard fans would really enjoy. But also this is her own story too and there's a freshness to it that I really, really loved. I do recommend reading The Pursuit of Love first if you haven't because I just think you get more from this if you already know The Pursuit of Love, but you could enjoy this just as a standalone as well. Indian Knight made some of the characters from The Pursuit of Love a lot more endearing. For instance, Uncle Matthew, I think is my favorite character in this book, and he's definitely not my favorite character in The Pursuit of Love. He is far more charming um, in Darling, though he still has a wonderful, eccentric edge to him that's for sure but he's just a much more likeable character. I think Linda is actually more likeable in Darling than she is in The Pursuit of Love as well but it's also well done and I highly recommend it. This was just really fun. There is sadness as well if you know The Pursuit of Love then yes India Knight has really kept the original plot for the most part of this so you can expect to have tissues needed at the end but I absolutely loved it and then I also curled up with the Marple collection of 12 new stories by 12 different writers all inspired by the one Miss Marple and I was really glad that I read this one again before doing 450 from Paddington for the Comfort Book Club this month I wanted to read this and I actually really enjoyed it there was I think they did a really good job of showing different aspects to Miss Marple and I loved how some of the writers were inspired either by different sort of plot devices that Agatha Christie often used or settings like there's another murder at the vicarage <laughs> that happens in this one or they were inspired by Miss Marple herself a lot. I actually really enjoyed all of them. I think the one I liked the least was the very last one because I felt that went a bit too off character for Miss Marple so I didn't like that one so much but all of the others I really enjoyed. I think my very favourite was actually Miss Marple at Christmas. It was nice having a real Christmas story to read um, over the holidays and I liked that one because there was also a real nod to Dorothy L Sayers in it which I, I love Dorothy L Sayers too and I appreciated that. But these were all really fantastic and I highly recommend it. So that was another really good read. 
And then just some sort of self-indulgent reading over the holidays. I read some more Beanie Malone books by Lenora Mattingly Webber. I read this one, Beanie Malone, and I also read Leave It to Beanie. I'll put a picture here because I forgot to include that one in my stack. Um, but these books were published in, well, from the 1940s through, I think, to the sort of 1970s. And they're about a young family, the Malones, and you see them grow up from sort of being young high schoolers through to marriage and motherhood. And they're another really fun series that I love, and I've started rereading them. Image Cascade Publishing has republished them in the States and they're much easier to find in the States. I think you can get them on Kindle too though if you're not in the States. So I have them on Kindle and they're definitely worth getting. I would really recommend giving the first one, Meet the Malones, a try, especially if you two are a fan of books like the Betsy Tacey series or Anne of Green Gables series, All of a Kind family series. I think there's something that North American writers did so well in writing these sort of charming family stories as a series. And the Malones are really one of them, uh, the Beanie Malone books. So they were both good um, snowy weather reads as well, Beanie Malone and Leave It to Beanie because there's lots of snow <laughs> storms that happen in the books. So uh, they were very good cold winter reads and just light fun reads that I enjoyed over Christmas. So anyway, that's all of my bookish news, I think, that I've now caught you up on. But I'm really looking forward to what lies in store for 2023. Thank you so much for your support of my channel last year and I hope you'll enjoy the increased content from me this year and also the reading and lifestyle vlogs that I'll be bringing you in 2023. Fingers crossed anyway. Do follow along with me. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face that pops up here. But thanks so much for watching and do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Let me know what books you got for Christmas. I'd love to hear if you had any great reads under the tree or did you read a good book yourself over the holidays? I'd love to know, so let me know in the comments. But thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you again very soon. Goodbye.